Good morning, everybody. Welcome to an event of the Brazil Minnesota Chamber of Commerce in partnership with the Minnesota Trade Office. And as we get started on this, before introducing everybody else, I would like to remind us that the mission of the Minnesota, the Brazil Minnesota Chamber of Commerce is to promote cultural, educational um, relations between Brazilians and Minnesotans, as well as commercial relations. And in this uh, sense, we are presenting this uh, presentation with the ambassador of Brazil. Uh, in the arrangements for this, we'd like to recognize our partners in this, the Minnesota Trade Office, who will be represented here by Gabriel, Abri Filtros in Brazil, who is extending the reach of this into Brazil for us and has provided this platform. Also Global Minnesota. And all of this would not be possible to arrange without the active background work of Paula Kahn, who is the honorary Brazilian consul here in Minnesota, very important role, and the previous president of the Brazil-Minnesota Chamber of Commerce, uh, Isabel Gomez. Today we will have um, uh, Consul Binoni talking briefly, Gabriel from Minnesota Train Office, and then Ambassador Nestor Forrester from the embassy in Washington, D.C. We welcome them all in. There will be ample time at the end for question and answers, so please put your questions in the chat so we're prepared, and then we'll be putting those up at the end to be answered by either the ambassador or the consul general or Gabriel from the Minnesota Trade Office. So without further ado, I'd like to pass the word over to uh, Consul General from the consulate in Chicago, Consul Benoni Belli. Uh, welcome in, and the word is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeff Hanson, president of the Brazil Minnesota Chamber of Commerce. Allow me to also thank your predecessor, Isabel Gomes, and the Honorary Council of Brazil and Minnesota, Paula Cani for their outstanding contribution to Brazil-Minnesota relations. I would like to express our appreciation to the whole Minnesota Trade Office team for partnering with the Consulate General of Brazil in Chicago in a number of initiatives. It is a great honor to deliver these brief remarks uh, at a very special event featuring His Excellency the Ambassador of Brazil to the United States, Nestor Foster Jr. I had the privilege to attend a meeting between Ambassador Foster and Governor Walls the other day, and it was clear the shared interest and commitment to strengthen Brazil-Minnesota trade and economic relations in a wide range of areas in which there is a huge potential to tap into. From medical technology industry and biotech to food, agriculture, financial services, advanced manufacturing, and among others. Ambassador Foster, we are particularly grateful to you for your effort to establish ties and open new avenues of cooperation well beyond the Beltway, and that's really important. I hope you'll be able to visit us soon and tour the Midwest to both get to know the vibrant Brazilian community in this region and meet our American friends here whose Midwestern warm hospitality I've been experiencing since my arrival in Chicago a year ago. Uh, it is now my pleasure to give the floor to Gabrielle Gerbeau, Executive Director of the Minnesota Trade Office for her remarks. Gabrielle, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Consul, and thank you, Jeff, for your leadership on this. It is my honor today to introduce His Excellency Nestor Foster Union, Ambassador of the Federative Republic of Brazil to the United States of America. Ambassador Forster, a native of Porto Alegre, is a career diplomat graduating from the prestigious Institute, Instituto Rio Branco, or the IRB, as we know it. In his extensive career, the ambassador has served in Canada, Costa Rica, and the United States, where he was posted three times to the embassy in Washington, as well as to the Brazilian consulates in Hartford, Connecticut, and New York. His diplomatic experience covers many areas, but perhaps the most notorious are trade negotiations, intellectual property, and international law. Ambassador, it is my pleasure to see you again. As Governor Walls stated in his meeting last week, Brazil is an important partner for Minnesota. Our trade last year was almost $350 million and unchanged during the pandemic. Very important to mention. 
From the Minnesota Trade Office, we will continue to promote the exports to Brazil through our team of experts here in Minnesota, but also with our foreign office that is in Sao Paulo, Brazil. You know, from my own experience, my own personal experience of doing business in Brazil for six years, it can seem a little bit complicated, but please let me clarify and let me give it another name, which is sophisticated. And once you get to do business in Brazil, it is a market of more than 211 million potential customers that you want to keep exploring. So Ambassador, with your leadership and expertise, the team in Chicago with Consul Benoni, and uh, the Honorary Consul here in Minnesota, Paula Cane, we are at your disposal and looking forward to the future of doing business in Brazil. Ambassador, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ebo. Thank you very much, President Hanson. Thank you, Ambassador Bailey, for your kind introductions and uh, your opening remarks. It's uh, a pleasure to be here with you at the Chamber, Brazil, uh, Minnesota Chamber of Commerce. As Ambassador Bailey mentioned, uh, just uh, last week, we had a, a very a productive meeting with Governor Tim Waltz discussing possibilities of cooperation between Minnesota and, and Brazil. And as you, you know better than I do, there are significant interests, significant Brazilian presence in the state of Minnesota, many Brazilian companies uh, which have invested there, such as uh, Gerdau, uh, VEG, uh, JBS, SWIFT, and so on, uh, as well as many companies from Minnesota with a significant presence uh, in Brazil, like Cargill Corporation and uh, 3M and General Mills uh, and, and so many others. Uh, I had the, the distinctive honor of visiting the state of Minnesota about 30 years ago in one of my previous stints here at the embassy. As Mr. Rabo mentioned, I was posted three times here to Washington, and it was a great visit, and I look forward to, to going back to St. Paul, uh, Minneapolis, and visit the great state of Minnesota. St. Paul is the birthplace of one of my favorite American writers, uh, Scott Fitzgerald. <laughs> it's always good to go back there. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to, to mention to you, you know, some of the things that have been going on in our bilateral relations uh, in the past six months with the new administration uh, here in Washington. Uh, you know, uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit of what we've done so far and what we intend to do in the, in the future, the months ahead. But before I start with that, I always like to begin uh, every presentation I make with uh, just highlighting uh, what Brazil and U.S. share, which makes our relation uh, uh, very unique. And uh, one thing that uh, really stands out is the fact that Brazil and the U.S. have the longest uh, bilateral relationship that Brazil has with any country in the world. We're going to celebrate 200 years in uh, less than two years in 1824 uh, of establishing those, those relations, which have always been very close, very friendly, uh, sometimes not so close, but always friendly. Uh, they are, you know, uh, unbroken over a period of, of two centuries. And, uh, you know, there are many uh, highlights I could bring to that. You know, very early on in our relationship, we signed an agreement of uh, friendship and uh, navigation and commerce in 1828. And uh, that's only a relic of the past. But the, the interesting fact is that the, this agreement is still in force in some aspects today. Uh, so it, it's, uh, you know, you cannot go, go uh, back any farther than that. Uh, as a, you know, as a sign of Brazil's uh, appreciation for the United States, we had our emperor, Peter II, Dom Pedro II, being the first head of a foreign state to visit the United States in the centennial of the American independence in 1876. The emperor came and stayed like three months here in the U.S. visiting uh, the, the Midwest and uh, New York and Pennsylvania and so on. Uh, you know, there are many, many highlights I could mention here. I always like to mention something which is little known and I think uh, explains a lot of the similarities we have uh, in terms of uh, the organization of the, the state in Brazil and here in the United States, which is the fact that the first Brazilian Republican constitution back in 1891 was largely inspired in the American constitution. A uh, committee of uh, you know, eminent jurists back then, led by the great uh, Rui Barbosa, uh, you know, studied the American constitution and uh, incorporated some elements uh, in our the organization of the Brazilian state, you know, the bicameral Congress, the, uh, the federative republic, uh, I mean, uh, the, even the, the minimum age you have to run for office, which is 35 years old, is the same, the same in Brazil as in the United States. But uh, I think nothing cemented more uh, in our close ties than fighting together in World War II. As you know, Brazil sent 25,000 troops to fight fascism and Nazism in the Italian uh, theater aside from keeping you know, uh, commercial lanes open 
in the sea in the in the Atlantic, and uh, that's something that really uh, established uh, a degree of proximity and cooperation in uh, the whole area of defense and military and so on that uh, still uh, bears fruit to this to this day. Let me just fast forward and, and talk a little bit about what's going on more recently. Uh, we continue to enjoy a very vibrant relation uh, with the United States since uh, uh, the President Biden's inauguration. Uh, we had since the, you know, the, the very first day President Bolsonaro made a point of sending a lengthy letter to President Biden congratulating him on, on his election and his inauguration and laying out you know, what he sees as the shared uh, principles that guide our relationship, you know, uh, our commitment to democracy, to the rule of law, respect for human rights, uh, economic freedom, uh, and so on, which guide basically, you know, uh, everything uh, we do uh, in, our, in our foreign policy. Uh, the president also laid out uh, what in his view are some of uh, the, the main points in our agenda. Uh, in our bilateral agenda, you know, our cooperation in trade and investment, uh, you know, the whole science and technology cooperation uh, in the energy field, in education and, and in other areas. And that letter was replied in the same very friendly tone by President Biden, uh, you know, highlighting the main concerns, main interests in the U.S., on the U.S. side uh, in the discussion on, on climate change and of course, I'm fighting the pandemic, which uh, is, is a priority for, for, for us as well. And uh, since then, you know, much has taken place and authorities from both sides have been meeting you know, at ministerial level. We have several meetings from our foreign minister with, uh, with the Secretary of State, with the USDR and our Minister of the Economy, with the Secretary of the Treasury and Secretary of Commerce and Agricultural Secretaries, etc. And this has been going on uh, at the high level. Uh, at the same time, we had some highlights, which I, I'd like to point out, things that have taken place. On, on the Brazilian side, we have moved forward with uh, advancing the process of uh, congressional review of the trade protocols we signed last year, last, last October, a very uh, uh, encompassing broad agreements uh, in the rule side of our trade relationship, uh, talking about the agreement on trade facilitation, on uh, uh, good regulatory practices and uh, the anti-corruption, you know, in, in the context of uh, foreign trade, and uh, those agreements on the U.S. side, they did not require any congressional action. But in Brazil, they are before the, the Chamber of Deputies, the, the the Committee on on Foreign Relations. There's a report there. It's moving moving fo uh, fast forward. Uh, we also had the agreement on the joint research and development of defense products. And uh, this is a very special agreement signed during the visit of President Bolsonaro uh, to the U.S. last March. And uh, again, on the, US, on the U.S. side, it's an executive agreement, does not require uh, approval by the Congress. On our side, it does. And it has already been, uh, been uh, subjected to a vote at uh, the Foreign Affairs Committee. It's moving on to the next committees and then to the Senate. We expect that, you know, in the next few months, we'll have this ready. Uh, to, to you know, continue to deepen our cooperation in this very crucial area. Uh, on, the, on the, you know, on the, on the broader agenda, uh, aside from trade and, and the, the, the defense, on defense, let me, let me just point out, we had last uh, Feb February, we conducted the largest military, joint military exercise after undertaken by Brazil and the United States with a whole company of uh, parachutists from Brazil jumping over the state of Louisiana in Fort Polk using Brazilian equipment, the uh, Embraer aircraft KC-390. And uh, it was a fantastic operation, you know, kind of exercise that the U.S. has with a handful of countries. And uh, both sides were very pleased with the results of the, the, the operation, the exercise. Uh, so this, uh, I would point out this as a, as a very interesting uh, highlight of what, what's been uh, going on uh, in, in recent months. Uh, we also had, just two weeks ago, we had a very important ceremony for Brazil signing, uh, joining the Artemis uh, project. As you know, it's the most ambitious uh, project for space exploration uh, anywhere in the world, uh, aimed to take, you know, the first uh, woman to, to, to the moon in the next few years, and then from there uh, having a, a, a human mission to, to Mars for the first time. And Brazil is one the first uh, Latin American country to join such effort. We consider it very crucial for the whole development of our space uh, industry. 
we have this great cluster in uh, near the, the city of Sao Paulo in São José dos Campos, where we have Embraer and other companies dedicated not only to uh, you know manufacturing of aircraft, civilian aircrafts, military aircrafts, etc., but uh, also uh, dedicated to space exploration. So Brazil intends to play an interesting role uh, in joining uh, Artemis, uh, very likely in, in uh, working together with the other partners in developing a lunar rover that could be sent to conduct uh, to, to the moon to conduct uh, scientific experiments there. Uh, one last uh, highlight uh, of uh, what's been going on here is uh, what has j just been announced uh, uh, less than two e weeks ago, which is the donation of vaccines uh, to Brazil. Brazil uh, had the fortune to be the country which received uh, the largest number of vaccines donated by the Biden administration. We're very pleased and thankful to the American government for that. Uh, Brazil has a very singular capacity, if you allow me just to, to, to bring you just a couple of uh, uh, highlights on, on our effort to fight the pandemic. You know, you know how big Brazil is, how you know, diverse our regions are, the many ch logistical challenges involved in the vaccination. But we have already vaccinated 110 million Brazilians, you know, uh, uh, most of them with the first doses, about 15% with uh, both doses. And now we have, you know, the Johnson vaccine, the single doses vaccine uh, comes in a very important moment when we had, you know, we have uh, right now in the months of July and August, uh, we, we have, uh, we, we are below capacity in terms of what we can deliver uh, in terms of vaccinations. We have 38,000 posts around the country to vaccinate people. We have a culture of vaccination in Brazil, which is very unique and uh, uh, allow us to deliver very fast uh, the vaccine. So the vaccines that have been donated less than two weeks ago have already, beginning last Monday, have uh, begun already to be uh, rolled out, deployed, you know, and uh, applied to people uh, around Brazil. Uh, I also like to highlight the fact that President Bolsonaro has, uh, uh, you know, chosen to to prioritize in our vaccination effort those most vulnerable uh, among Brazilians. So, aside from healthcare workers and senior citizens, which are also a priority, uh, the federal government has made an effort to vaccinate the indigenous peoples in the Amazon, and we have very good numbers to show for that effort. Uh, with 83 percent of uh, those populations uh, are already vaccinated, some 73 percent uh, having received uh, both doses. So, uh, you know, that, that shows uh, the level of commitment and the effort that, of course, this is a team effort among several uh, entities, the armed forces that have been helping us to deliver th those vaccines in, in the uh, sometimes difficult circumstances uh, in the Amazon uh, and so on. So I would like to highlight that and, you know, we have a vibrant agenda ahead of us. Uh, there is a renewed commitment on both sides, and it's coming up in, in all uh, the contexts we have here in Washington uh, among, uh, you know, uh, our, our, the authorities I mentioned and, and myself uh, with, uh, with the new administration, uh, this commitment to continue to work for the promotion of democracy in our hemisphere, to cooperate in multilateral institutions. There is a, a renewed uh, proximity, I'd say, in our views to work together for the reform of the WTO in Geneva, which, you know, is very important for international trade. Uh, also, Brazil has just been elected as a rotating member of the Security Council, and we already have established a, a cooperation, uh, have been invited by our American friends to have a cooperation coordination in everything that has to do with the agenda of the Security Council, which is something that uh, we see as a, a very interesting for, for both sides. So I will not take uh, much more of the time. I'd just like to bring those highlights, and uh, I would gladly take any questions you might have about you know what lies ahead and uh, the tremendous potential we have for cooperation between our countries and specifically the great state of uh, Minnesota and, and Brazil. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency Ambassador Nestor Forrester. Um, I would welcome anybody who wants to ask a question to post it in the uh, chat section of that and we will raise that. Um, so far, we've gotten some comments. Uh, one of those comments from Steve Phipps is specifically uh, congratulating the ambassador for your leadership in that, and particularly with the uh, annexes on trade facilitation, good regulatory practices, and anti-corrupt uh, actions, and including the medical technology sector, which is a significant cluster 
here in Minnesota and with the partners in Brazil. So that is a congratulations to your, your ambassador on that. Um, we also have a question from Rob Scarlett, which is saying, you know, should small and medium size manufacturing companies in Minnesota be encouraged to seek opportunities in Brazil? And I would add to that, in what sectors are there particular opportunities for the medium and small size companies? Yes, uh, thank you for that question. Yeah, of course, you know, we, we all welcome very much, uh, you know, the investment from uh, companies of, of any size. And we know that small and medium sized companies are the, the engine of in innovation and a new investment. Uh, we have, you know, uh, vibrant uh, economic activity uh, taken up in Brazil after the pandemic. We have a, a, a growth forecast this year of around 5%, presenting many opportunities, including for small and medium sized uh, companies. Uh, I would recommend that any company interested in, in uh, investing in Brazil, you know, basically all sectors are open for, for investment partnerships and, uh, you know, and, and participation of, of, of American companies. I would recommend that you uh, uh, get in touch with our great uh, consul, uh, uh, consulate general in Chicago, which has a trade section, which might be able to assist you. And of course, the embassy has another one here. Uh, we also might be able to work with our uh, friends at the consulate to, to provide you specific information, you know, if you're looking for a specific niche market, a specific area for a joint venture uh, uh, in our country. Very good. Thank you, Ambassador, for that. Um, I would like to relay another question that was actually posed to me on a more personal side from Mr. Bill Newman of a company in Minneapolis called RNAS. Um, we mentioned you know, the environment and how many concerns there are on that. Um, Bill works specifically in the area of bioremediation, meaning cleaning up and making sure we have secure groundwater under the ground and working with partners in Brazil on it to try to address this situation in Brazil. And um, it's been a bit of a frustrating experience. Like Gabriel said, it's sometimes we have frustrating barriers a part of that is maybe a sophistication of the market. But um, one great difficulty that he has had in his business is to get products approved through Obama uh, that are have been actively used for many years in remediation of environmental problems in other parts of the world. And um, we know that the rules on Obama date back to, I think, 1947. Is there any initiative on the federal level to facilitate or modernize that work with Obama to allow more interchange between technology companies in the US and Brazil, specifically to help with environmental cleanup situations in Brazil? Excellent question. Thank you so much. I didn't mention the environment, which is, of course, an, a crucial element in our bilateral agenda, just to, you know, so I wouldn't take too much time in the beginning and could uh, address the questions. So let me try to answer this question talking a little bit about, you know, cooperation and environmental side, and then talking about uh, economic reform and cutting red tape, and then trying to address this specific question. So uh, in terms of the environment, uh, I think it's important to, to, to highlight that, you know, from the outset from the, uh, of the Biden administration, we have sought to establish a, an open dialogue uh, in what is very uh, an agenda item, which is very important for both our countries. We know the priority uh, ascribed by President Biden and his administration to the whole question of climate change uh, in Brazil. You know, Brazil uh, has been an active uh, participant of the Paris Agreement and we never left the Paris Agreement. We very much welcome the US uh, back into the fold. And uh, we uh, established a dialogue with Special Envoy for the Environment, uh, former Secretary John Kerry and his team, which is ongoing. And, uh, you know, with two, uh, two main areas uh, for uh, our dialogue. One focused on what we can do together in terms of bilateral cooperation, uh, working together uh, in seeing how we can uh, cooperate to reduce deforestation in the Amazon, uh, diminish the number of fires uh, in the Amazon. But at the same time, you know, now the, the, on the more a positive side, see what we can do to bring economic opportunity to the 25 million Brazilians who live there. This is something that has been highlighted 
uh, by, by President Bolsonaro uh, that you know we need to address, we need to create better opportunities for those who live there. It's, uh, it's a big paradox we have that the wealthiest region in Brazil in terms of natural resources, which is the Amazon, also has the lowest uh, indexes of human development anywhere in Brazil. So we need to address that, and that the answer for that is not uh, choosing between you know the environment or economic opportunity, but doing both things together in what has you know since the Rio conference in '92, uh, this new comp concept of uh, a sustainable development. That's exactly what we need in 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 the Amazon in Brazil in general, perhaps, and specifically on the, on the opportunities there. There is this whole uh, area of the bioeconomy encompassing everything from uh, ecotourism to the pharmaceutical and cosmetic industry to aquaculture and uh, the many opportunities that we have there uh, to scale projects that are already working on the ground generating opportunity at the same time protecting uh, the environment so you know that the cooperation uh, is ongoing our dialogue is ongoing and uh, this is one important component the other one is what uh, brazil and the us can do together for the success of COP26, the, the conference of the parties of the Paris Agreement coming up in Glasgow in November. And uh, one crucial thing that we have been uh, trying to address is uh, what we can do to come to an agreement on uh, uh, the whole question of uh, creating the, regulating the carbon markets around the world, Article 6 of the Convention, uh, the question of remuneration of ecosystem services, which, are, which is absolutely uh, crucial for Brazil and the US and, and, and for the world. So that's another area that uh, we've been working together on. That's uh, basically just the framework for uh, the, the environmental side. Uh, on the economic side, uh, you know, you're absolutely right about the amount of red tape we have in Brazil. It's uh, it's one of the the main uh, obstacles uh, we have for uh, our our prosperity. Is kind of a, you know self-imposed. Uh, uh, people say that you know the. The biggest and most important trade agreement that Brazil uh, can have is not with its uh, largest trading partners, but with itself, you know, eliminating these inefficiencies in, in the terms of, you know, inefficient regulation, uh, red tape, and, and so on. Uh, specifically in the environmental area, if there are concerns, if, uh, you know, if there, there's a specific concern on uh, something that might be an outdated uh, regulation or something that is uh, creating difficulties for for bringing technology or bringing a product into brazil uh, there are means to address that and again you know uh, the the consulate and the embassy here are, are you know part of our mission is to try to help you address those situations we do that on a routine basis here and uh, you know please feel free to contact i don't know if ambassador belly would like to add anything about that in terms of the resources he has uh, there in chicago but uh, you know certainly here we here in washington are also able to assist you uh, to address specific concerns you might have in this area. Uh, just to, to add to what the ambassador has just mentioned, of course, we are here at your disposal to uh, help to navigate Brazilian regulations and provide the, all the information you need. Of course, we work uh, in partnership and under the supervision of the, the, uh, the embassy in Washington, D.C. So things that are more uh, that requires, you know, a more uh, political approach to, to be solved, like we have bilateral um, mechanisms to try to uh, overcome obstacles and barriers to trade and regulations that are causing trouble in our relationships and so this of course is addressed by the, the the embassy but we are an antenna for the embassy here in the region so if you feel that uh, you're not going uh, f uh, far enough because of regulations of course we will uh, uh, talk to our colleagues there in the trade section at the embassy and the ambassador himself is someone very much interested in these issues uh, and we'll bring up this with the uh, american counterparts and try to solve from our perspective and send it to Brasilia as well. But uh, we have, uh, from our experience, many, many companies from the Midwest are going to Brazil and they are uh, really uh, being successful there. And there are other uh, agencies in the Brazilian government that can also help them to, 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 to establish in Brazil, the APEX, for instance, the Brazilian Trade and Promotion. Uh, a trade promotion and investment agency they have a whole uh, area just for attracting investments and 
providing information and helping uh, those who want to invest in Brazil to uh, get to know the market and how to best uh, approach uh, the Brazilian opportunities. So we have here in the chat, I saw that Isabel Gomes, as a former president of, uh, of the chamber, uh, saying and, and, and even uh, thanking uh, Gabriel for applying the, the term sophisticated because uh, that's the, the the real the best uh, way to describe Brazilian market of course we have our idiosyncrasies but uh, once you understand uh, you can make huge profits and you can have a, a wonderful partnerships with Brazilian companies um, you know team up with Brazilian companies to get to know the market sometimes that's the best way actually even for Brazilians here you get to partner with someone who is already there in the field working and you, together you can have a joint venture and and, and uh, it's much more successful that way than just going alone and solo sometimes yeah, especially for uh, uh, you know small and middle-sized uh, companies yeah uh speaking of small and middle-sized companies uh we had another question here from rob scarlett regarding uh the anvisa regulatory process which can be a bit long and cumbersome. We understand that there are good advances being made nowadays to modernize that. And we really welcome the involvement of the consulate and the embassy together with the medical companies here in Minnesota, which is a focal point here in Minnesota. But uh, the question comes more uh, from being able to navigate through the NVISA regulatory process um, what type of help can be given more to medium and small type companies? 3M knows what they're up on on Visa. I think they're pretty good at it. But a lot of the small and medium sized companies have difficulties navigating through this, uh, the bureaucracy, the sophistication of the Anvisa process to be able to participate in the market in Brazil. Do you have any comments on that? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Scarlett, uh, Scarlett for, for your question. Uh, it's, you know, it, your question is uh, uh, kind of echoes the, the previous ones in terms of you know the interest of medium small and medium uh, sized companies in, in Brazil specifically in the terms of uh, you know what Anvisa does Anvisa has largely uh, uses largely uh, the model of the FDA here in the United States and to some extent the European agencies uh, in terms of the regulation for licensing of medical devices products technology and, and medicines and so on so you know it should be not be totally strange to an american company uh, uh, because you're used with the fda process here but uh, as ambassador belly said so well you know that that's our job here at the consulate the embassy you know our consulate network here in the united states uh, chicago is the one that has jurisdiction over minnesota we have 10 consulates uh, around the u.s covering the whole country and uh, our job here is to assist small and medium-sized companies Th those are our clients and people who you know Look for so seek our, our, our assistance more than the, the big largest companies, which uh, usually uh, deal themselves uh, themselves directly with the government authorities in Brazil and so on. But uh, you know, if you need uh, you know uh, uh, questions of uh, you know how to what's the process uh, or who I should I uh, uh, talk to or you know uh, uh, questions specific questions about the medical sector, uh, we might uh, uh, working together in coordination here the cost of the embassy be able to to assist you. Uh, please try us, you know, send, send us an email uh, as soon as we finish our talk here and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can and then try to, to assist your specific concern. Uh, here we have a question from João Mora from Brazil um, in Portuguese, but he's asking what the expectations are from the point of view of the economy after the pandemic and with other countries, companies, and the society that we've gone through. Um, and he's really asking, you know, what is the future look and how is the economy in Brazil coming along, and particularly related to the markets of health and the environment? Uh, do you have some comments related to that, Ambassador? Uh, absolutely. As I said in the beginning, uh, you know, in terms of uh, activity, there is a great rebound in the Brazilian economy. Initial forecasts for the growth uh, this year, 2021, 
uh, were around 3.5 percent. Now people are talking about anything uh, of GDP growth between 4.5 or 5, up to 5 percent already. So the, the increase in, in the activity is there. We are still, you know, not entirely out of the woods in terms of fighting the pandemic, but uh, there's an enormous effort there. On one side, uh, what Brazil has done, and it's important to mention that it doesn't get always, you know, the coverage it, it should in the press. We have spent around 8.5% of our GDP in direct assistance. That, you know, that's a tremendous amount of resources going at one level to the state and municipalities to fight a pandemic for health authorities on the ground. And on the other side, in the, you know, undertaking direct cash transfers <laughs> to those most in need. And we have that, that has reached about 60 million Brazilians uh, with, you know, this direct cash transfers, which were absolutely vital to keep families going uh, during the, the pandemic. That program has now been extended for another uh, three months. So, you know, there's the recuperation of activity. There's the expectation that the vaccination campaign, which I, <coughs> I already mentioned here, has this great numbers of, you know, 110 million vaccines already distributed, uh, applied. But, you know, in a population of 220 million, still some, uh, some way to go. But, uh, you know, the, the activity is rebounding and the prospects for the upcoming year, I think, are great. Uh, we expect even uh, perhaps a, a greater GDP expansion uh, next year. One, one uh, data that's in, in interesting to highlight is that during the, the, the pandemic last year in 2020, we had uh, a decrease in our exports to the U.S., of around 25% over the previous year, over 2019, uh, which you know uh, shows uh, number one, the U.S. is a, a very is the most important market for Brazilian exports in the manufacturing sector, and those sectors were the ones that were hit the hardest. They're talking about you know uh, uh, transportation, uh, aviation, uh, uh, parts of uh, vehicles and aircraft and uh, fuels, etc. Those took a big hit last year. The good news is that in the first six months of this year, we have seen an expansion of Brazilian exports to the United States of over 33%. Okay, so we have more than recuperated what we had lost, and uh, you know the, the prospects remain remain very interesting. Specifically uh, on the question, I don't know, uh, you know, the interaction between uh, uh, medicine and the environment and so on. Uh, I don't know if there's any specific thing that you'd like me to, to highlight, but, uh, you know, I, I mentioned here uh, our priority for, for the environment and uh, specifically on, on uh, you know, the Brazil's environmental profile. There's, uh, you know, all this talk and one of the great goals of the Paris Convention is to promote the decarbonization and the energy transition and so on. And Brazil has undertaken very important commitments in this area with uh, President Bolsonaro but uh, in his participation at the leaders' meeting uh, at the end of uh, last April, April 22nd, uh, when he brought to the table with Brazil's commitment to complete uh, uh, its uh, energy transition into, uh, by 2050, I think we were the first developing nation to undertake such an ambitious uh, goal. Uh, many others are still talking about 2060. And, uh, you know, the reason Brazil can, can undertake that level of commitment is, uh, you know, if you look at our our profile so far, to, to a large extent, Brazil has, uh, you know, begun and uh, made great strides in terms of energy transition. Uh, if you consider that uh, almost half, 48 percent, 48 percent of all energy consumed in Brazil comes from renewable sources. 85 percent of all electricity consumed in Brazil comes from renewable sources. And that's the result, you know, from uh, programs that began a long time ago with uh, you lots of use of hydropower, but mostly uh, biofuels, renewable fuels, among them ethanol, but, but others as well, biomass. And uh, so Brazil has this very clean energy profile, uh, which uh, puts in a very you know, uh, good position to make an important contribution for the whole goal, uh, goals of the, the Paris Agreement. Uh, on, on, the same, uh, on the same token, just to mention that, uh, you know, uh, we talk a lot about the Amazon and we see the headlines and everybody's very much concerned. And uh, we, we have challenges in that area. You know, we need to, to, to be more successful in fighting deforestation, which unfortunately is a trend that began, you know, not uh, just last year, but it, it's been going on since 2012. And uh, we haven't been able to make a dent in an ascending trajectory of that deforestation. But still, with uh, you know, 
uh, we, we are trying to address that. Uh, we are going to send uh, 3,000 troops now to fight specific areas where we have illegal activities uh, in the Amazon. But still, uh, aside from that, you know, we have 82% of the Amazon forest still intact, 82%. And Brazil has uh, uh, something that is, is, again, very unique. We have about two-thirds of our original vegetation covering our territory still uh, standing. Uh, you know, in terms of comparison, here in the United States, that's only about 20% of the territory. In many European countries, it's, uh, you know, less than 1%. So it's always good to, you know, to take a look at the broader picture to see exactly what's going on, because the environment is something complex. It's, uh, you know, should not be reduced to, to, to simple equations. And when we look at this broader picture, we see that Brazil is in a very good position and we intend to continue to, to preserve uh, this tr tremendous uh, uh, you know, treasure that we have in the Amazon and in other uh, ecosystems around our country. Excellent, Ambassador. That was a very good and refreshing view on uh, the complicated and sophisticated situation in Brazil on the environment. It is important to have a broad aspect of that. And I think, Gabriel, you have a comment you would like to add? Yes, thank you very much, Jeff. I just wanted to follow up, actually, and add something to Isabel uh, Gomez's comment. Um, when I talk about sophistication, is because you need to take the negativity of the complication, right? The, the whole point is to show that there is a huge opportunity in, uh, in Brazil. And the trade-off is so committed to Brazil and to international, I mean, to the international markets in general, but Brazil specifically that not only we have our office in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, but we offer free services coming from that office for small and medium companies in export related activities. So we are really investing in our companies to explore the markets, even though they can be sophisticated, there are huge opportunities that we don't want them to just ignore because of some kind of uh, complication or sophistication. I'm going to repeat sophistication all the time. But um, but so I just want to make sure that the, the companies that are listening to us, they know that we offer those services. So please contact us and contact uh, Rachel Limon, which is our expert in Brazil, that she will be able to literally take you by the hand and walk you through all the things that we can do for you for free. But to add to that, we're so committed to exports that we have a grant also that helps companies to travel to Brazil and other places, but in this case, to Brazil to either do any other export related um, activities as a trade show, as we match the funds up to $7,500 for companies to travel to Brazil. So with those two uh, activities and the two initiatives, we're truly committing ourselves to help any company that is willing to at least kind of see the first layer of, of, the, of the opportunity in Brazil. I just wanted to make sure because sometimes it gets, I know I'm getting into the detail, but detail is important when there is a service attached and a free service attached. So thank you for that. Thank you. If you, uh, President Hanson, if, if you allow me to comment on that, thank you very much, Mr. Bo, for, for that clarification. And, and uh, you know, we really appreciate the role that the Chamber uh, plays in assisting its members. And uh, just uh, I'd like to highlight two things connected to that. Uh, one of that is uh, when we had uh, uh, Ambassador uh, Bally and I had a conversation with Governor uh, Waltz, uh, just uh, over a week ago, and uh, you know, uh, we we talked about we discussed the possibility of a a visit to Brazil. I invited him to go there, and that's something that we could help organize. And of course, you know, a trade mission organized by by the chamber uh, would would give uh, you know a great substance to, to to such a visit. So that's something perhaps we should look into. And then let me mention connected to that as well. Uh, uh, you know, the whole question, we, we mentioned the name of the companies, but we, we didn't talk about the issues. You know, the whole question of agricultural technology, which I think is something that binds and brings together, you know, Minnesota and, and Brazil and, uh, in, and the U.S. more, more broadly. We, we are two, you know, ag powerhouses and we have, you know, great sustainable agriculture. We have made great strides in terms of uh, technology uh, going forward. And that there's so much opportunity going on there. I'd like to mention just one, one thing that we are doing. We have a bilateral forum for energy, the U.S. Brazil Business Forum, OSBAF, which met uh, uh, recently, I think last time, last January. It's, it's an ongoing dialogue. And uh, we are talking about, you know, the use of renewable fuels, uh, how we can cooperate more in that area. And one area that's it's coming up as very important is the whole question of sustainable aviation uh, fuels. 
uh, uh, SAF, you know. We don't expect to be using electric engines to move uh, uh, aircraft across the Atlantic anytime soon, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, we have a great opportunity there to cooperate in terms of the sustainable aviation fuels based on, you know, biomass, biofuels, uh, and so on. So that's another area that I think brings us uh, together and should be, should be explored, perhaps in a trade mission uh, led by, by the governor. Thank you, Ambassador. I'd uh, like to leverage off of that comment a little bit. First off, uh, we appreciate the uh, partnership that we at the Brazil-Minnesota Chamber have with the Minnesota Trade Office, which is the official state agency that would coordinate things like missions. We would love to support that as the chamber, uh, and that would be something very interesting. We would like that, and we appreciate the efforts of the Trade Office in facilitating exports from Minnesota to Brazil. But remembering also that the Chamber's mission is in two directions. Besides also, you know, Minnesota to Brazil, we also like to facilitate the Brazil to Minnesota. And in that aspect, I know we have several companies in Brazil watching that because I've been preaching to them how great the state of Minnesota is for doing business in the U.S. Uh, it's not just Orlando or New York or whatever, it's Minnesota. And uh, they are looking at bringing products, probably investments, to the U.S. And I'm saying Minnesota. I'd like to hear a little bit from uh, the Brazilian side, Ambassador from you or from Council General Benoni, about what assistance can be available for these Brazilian companies that want to establish a beachhead sales into and possible investments in the US and hopefully in Minnesota. What type of support can be given to these type of companies? What I'm thinking about is from Minas Gerais and tried to start something in the end of 2019, 2020, needless to say, they got put on the shelf for the pandemic, but now they're wanting to reactivate that and what support could they get? from the consulate or from the embassy in terms of working with the U.S. Very good. Let me start and then I'll let Ambassador Belly compliment if he wants. Uh, you know, what we mentioned before here about our trade section, which is actually, it's a misnomer because it's a trade and investment section. So we are here to assist with that side of the equation uh, as well. Uh, you know, if there are opportunities for investment from Brazilian companies, in, uh, you know, you're looking for partnerships, you're looking for specific sectors, we have, you know, the trade promotion sectors, and we have, as Ambassador Belli mentioned, the Brazilian Association of Export, uh, APEX, important partner uh, in this in these operations. The, the good news about that is that there's a tremendous interest from Brazilian companies in investing in the American market. Brazilian investment in the U.S. has grown 350 percent, 3.5 times over the past decade and has reached $42 billion in, in stock of, of Brazilian FDI here, you know. Brazil has 17 unicorns, it's the, by far the largest in Latin America, and all those unicorns have ties to American companies, to American startups, to investment here in the United States. So, you know, the, the, the ecosystem is, is given, and, uh, you know, we are here to, to help. I don't know if Benoni would like to, to add anything about that. Yes, thank you. Uh, just to let you know that uh, we are making an effort uh, here at the consulate to spread far and wide the word about uh, the importance of this region in Brazil among the, our entrepreneurs, our companies. Uh, and so we've been doing that with now with virtual uh, events that are uh, intended to provide you know high quality information about what the uh, Brazilian companies will find here and the opportunities that they can find in the Midwest. We've done one with uh, Minnesota already about the fintech uh, area sector, uh, in which uh, Brazilians uh, Brazilian Association of FinTech was uh, uh, participating and then invited uh, several members of the Brazilian fintech ecosystem to be there and they attended the event and they were able to have a conversation with uh, companies from, the, from, from Minnesota and uh, trade officials. And I'd like to here to recognize the presence of Rachel Limon from the trade office. Who, uh, she was really wonderful helping us to put together this event. But we've been doing this also uh, in, in different uh, uh, states with Iowa. We had an event about the ag tech 
and also with Indiana and several other states, uh, Illinois. And besides that, uh, we're making an effort also to cover the, whole, the 10 states of our jurisdiction here uh, with uh, specific uh, studies on the main opportunities from the Brazilian perspective uh, that, are, uh, that the Brazilians can find in the region. So we've already published and uploaded to our uh, site uh, a study on Illinois and one on Indiana, but uh, there is uh, one on Minnesota and another uh, on uh, Michigan coming out soon in August. There will be an event to launch this event. And in these events, we always have a company from Brazil or from the US who have uh, a good story to tell. Uh, I think uh, storytelling is fundamental in this case for uh, those who are uh, interested in doing business to know how uh, other companies uh, were successful, the barriers that they faced, uh, the, how they overcame, uh, they, they were able, able to overcome, you know, the cultural differences and the kind of support they will find here from the states and from the consulate. So all these questions we've been uh, trying to address in, in with these uh, efforts and several efforts. But uh, besides that, of course, we're also uh, open to specific uh, requests uh, if uh, a Brazilian company or an American company need any specific information, we also can uh, provide and try to help when, if necessary, we will also uh, ask the, the help from the, the, the embassy in Washington, D.C. But we are at your disposal and, and we've been doing the, this actually, as we've been receiving uh, several questions, uh, specific questions about uh, different sectors. Of course, we don't have, you know, the experts in ever and each sector so we will have to uh, search for the information but we do this put the person in contact with those who can answer the question and facilitate and also do the follow-up in order to be sure that the person or the company got the information uh, it needs to, to be successful so that's that's more or less uh, in a nutshell what we've been doing here in Chicago and if I may add one more thing, the Minnesota Trade Office also has an FDI department, which is a foreign direct investment. And we have people that are specialized in making sure that any interest of a foreign company, in this case, a Brazilian company interested in coming to Minnesota, finds the best opportunity, not only in location, but not only with the initiatives and the incentives. We have already three incredible businesses that have located in Minnesota. They are Gerdo, uh, GB, JBS, and Natura. So those are three examples of great investments that create jobs every day in Minnesota that we appreciate and we cherish and we pamper as much as we can to make sure that not only they come, but they stay and, and, they, and, and they expand in Minnesota. So just in case, if you need that help from us, we're also available here to provide all the information required. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Gabrielle, for that. And um, I think what has just been explain very well on this from both the Minnesota side and the Brazil side that there are tools available to be able to investigate. And like Gabriel just said, uh, Minnesota takes a very active role in not only exporting, but also inviting foreign direct investments and analysis of markets as well as Brazil uh, helps on those things. We as the Brazil Minnesota Chamber of Commerce like to promote these bilateral things going both ways. And uh, in that, we rely, of course, on uh, the parties we have involved here with the Embassy of Brazil, the consulate in Chicago, also having the presence of an honorary consul in Minnesota, Paula Khan, which was a big step forward and a huge uh, benefit for the Brazilian community that is resident here in Minnesota. Uh, we have an important community on that and we as the chamber want to be a forum to bring those people in contact to be able to spread the view of Brazil to Minnesotans and of, uh, you know, Minnesota to Brazilians. And it is a very broad topic that we are very passionate about uh, promoting. So um, on that, are there any further questions that we have for our colleagues here? I'm just looking at here. Um, I'd like to ask 
one comment or give one comment from Adi Silvera. Okay. Uh, and Ambassador, I'll let you interpret that a little bit, but he's just saying, you know, como engajar no Brasil a gente além do tréplica e LSE Universidade Governo e Agentes Econômicos. Muito obrigado. And just as a preface to that, remembering that one of our initiatives and efforts as the Chamber is social, cultural, and educational. We would like to promote more ties on that, so it does involve many things, including universities. Uh, I'd like to get your comments on that interaction from three different sectors. Very good. Uh, it's, it's an excellent question. I understand, you know, aside from government, the private sector, and, and uh, uh, what, what you mentioned is that, uh, you know, uh, there's a tremendous, a very vibrant uh, civil society uh, uh, sector in Brazil that's ready to, to work with its, uh, its partners in the U.S. Uh, specific on education, let me highlight one thing uh, which I think I didn't mention at, uh, on uh, my opening remarks, and this is something ongoing and very important, which is an agreement we signed with the Smithsonian Institution, uh, and that, that has it has many uh, aspects to it, but one of the, the most important, crucial ones is the one that will allow the Brazilian network of public schools to use in its program Science at School, Ciencia na Escola, to use materials produced by the Smithsonian Institution. So this is a tremendous uh, education and social uh, outreach and impact, and uh, we are very much pleased with that. It's, uh, you know, the agreement has already been signed and it's being implemented. Some of the materials are being already translated by the Ministry of Education in Brazil to be used uh, in schools. But there's more to come. We want to deepen that experience. And uh, one of the ideas is to build uh, a museum focused on science and, and technology in the in the northeastern Brazilian city. This is an ongoing discussion, but this is something that highlights you know, the tremendous potential of this agreement we have which what is the largest uh, museum institution in the world. So, you know, if your interest is in education, I think that that's a great, a great area to work with. And we welcome any, any suggestions for further cooperation in that area. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador, on that. I uh, would like to just remind people also that are watching this or others that may hear about it, that this uh, full session and discussion uh, is being recorded and it is available on our YouTube channel, Conecta Brasil-Minnesota. And you can also connect on it from our website, which is brazilminnesotachamber.org. Uh, feel free to go in there and make comments, also on comments for further types of events that may be of interest and things that can promote this mission and this interchange um, between great state of Minnesota I love it. And the wonderful, great country of Brazil that I also love so very much as a Brazilianized American. We want to do more between both places. That's what this is all about. So we thank all the participation on it. And um, we appreciate the comments on everything. Any further comments, Gabriel or Council Benoni? Just thank you very much for organizing this. I think it has to be reminded every day that Brazil is the opportunity to be looking at. So at this point in time, it, it has to be almost automatic to go to Brazil because it is such an opportunity that there is no business that cannot consider Brazil at one point in time in their, in their opening. So thank you, Jeff, for organizing this. And thank you, of course, to our dear ambassador for, for attending and, and to the Consul General. Better. And hopefully we will have a mission very soon, definitely. Uh, I would like also to thank for the organization. Thank you, uh, Jeffrey and Gabriel and the ambassador, of course, uh, the, our star here in the event. And uh, But I'd like also to recognize uh, our honorary council, Paula Cani, who is uh, following here the event and uh, say a few words. I think it's very important to stress the contribution that Paula has been uh, doing for Brazil um, and Minnesota relations, and she has she's been wonderful trying to help and helping uh, Brazilian uh, citizens that live in the region. You know that we have this challenge uh, being Consul General here in Chicago. We are in Chicago, but we have to cover 10 states in the Midwest, and it's a vast territory. So the 
strengthening the, the network of honorary consulates is, is one of our priorities. We have created one more recently in Indiana, when we have in Michigan, and we have uh, Paula, and we are lucky to have Paula there because she is a great person, a great executive, and very uh, well known by the Brazilian community. She's a leader there. So I'd like to commend her for her work, and I hope to be visiting you soon, uh, probably in, in August, the first week of August. I, I got a positive sign from Brasilia that I'll be able to travel. And so we are going to also to uh, prepare the future mobile consulate to the region to try to uh, give the, uh, the assistance the Brazilian citizens, citizens need, especially those who are not able to travel to Chicago. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vu, President Hanson. Thank you, Ambassador Bailey, for the terrific job that the, the consulate of uh, General in Chicago does you know, covering all this uh, enormous uh, territory. And uh, thank you for the consul, the honorary consul for your help, uh, you know, on the site there. And le let me just wrap up by, you know, thank you for the opportunity and saying that, as I think of President Biden said in his reply letter to President Bolsonaro in his inauguration, you know, uh, there is no limit to what we can accomplish together when we work together. So it's, you know, very nice to see the level of commitment and the uh, cooperation we have with institutions there in Minnesota, our consulate, and the countenance here at the embassy to assist in any way we can to continue to promote, you know, Brazil-U.S. Uh, uh, friendship uh, here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador, Council Boni, and Gabriel, for everything, your participation. Bringing these stronger ties is our objective, and I think we made a good step forward on that. Thank you all for your participation, and we look forward to seeing you in the future in other events and hopefully in person in person soon. Very good. Thank you. Thank you much. Bye now.